Perhaps he'll die this time. <laughs> what an opening line, y'all. Ooh, we love a peeping Tom, don't we? What's your name? What's your name? Splendidly expansive novel of high intellect and grand passion. Hi, hello. It's your boy Nate. I read books because reading is sexy and if you're not reading, you're not sexy. I've been an awful YouTuber, and I'm probably gonna mention this again somewhere in the future, but y'all, I'm back at home in LA, and I haven't had like an actual moment of time to just like sit down and talk about books. But here I am in my Peggy Goo shirt. We've got our diet coffee on deck, and I'm in a closet. I'm back in the closet, y'all. But I wanted to do this video before I don't have any- I woke up at six for y'all. I woke up at six to make this video. But we got a massive book haul, y'all. This is a series of books in no particular order that I ordered or have been given or have uh, received in the past year or so. So we're just gonna fly through these. I'm not gonna really talk about what they're about because there's too many. There's too many, y'all. But this is a real treat. I just want to show you all. Y'all ready for this? Okay. Y'all, <laughs> I got two copies of mating. One friend sent me this and the other sent me this. I got a giant massive hardback um, of this and then I got the paperback. I don't think this needs any mention at all, but it's been getting the rounds on booktube. It's about love. Splendidly expansive novel of high intellect and grand passion. American anthropologist at loose ends in the South African Republic of Botswana. I just know that this is going to be a major emotional heady read. Super excited to jump into this. Uh, I've heard really great things about it, so excited to do this. And then my boy, my boy over at the Disco King told me about Gary Lutz and uh, I'm just curious. I'm just curious, y'all, and I'm really stoked to get into their work. They are, from what I remember, a uh, short story writer working from the grotesque, and all of the characters seem to be the same person throughout the short stories, but uh, veer into the depressed and, yeah, the, the grotesque. Otessa Boschwick has mentioned that this was one of her favorite writers, so super excited to get into the headspace and uh, the playing field of which Moshvig works in, so super excited to do this. This is The Divorcer by Gary Lutz. And then over at, oh god, what's the name of that bookstore? One of my favorite bookstores, whose name I've forgotten, and I'll leave it here, hopefully. They're a cute little bookstore. I like them because they uh, have a curated selection. It's very small. A lot of negative space on the bookshelves, but the books that they have are either first editions or very hard books um, to find and signed. A majority of the books are signed, which I love. I found Modern Film Scripts of Pierrot Le Fou by Goldau, and I've just been into getting into uh, reading screenplays, so I'm so happy I found this. Oh, the bookmark is in here. Alias Books. Yes. Very fun. Uh, it's in Glendale, yeah. Yeah, I was looking for this on eBay and this was 20 bucks and everything else on eBay was like 30 plus 40 and it was uh, too much and so glad I found this out of steel. So yeah, it was sort of the, one of the films that got me into watching movies. So yeah, really excited to just read through this. I was also sent The Birthday Party by Laurent Mauvignier. This is an ARC, but like I got it a long time ago when it was getting all the hype somewhere earlier in the year last year, but excited to do this. What I think this is a very slow burn thriller with ghosts, I believe, and takes place within a day or two. A day, a day. Very excited to see how all of this is a day. Crazy. Um, heard many good things about this from my faves too. I believe, yeah, Kieran from Kieran Reader as well as Katie James and Alex 
from what page are you on? I've said many good things about this, so I'm excited to do this. I also got <laughs> a physical ARC of YN S3. I praised the heck out of this last year, and uh, yeah, it's finally nice to see a uh, physical copy of it. But yeah, I just love the cover so much, so much fun. It was an honorable mention for my top books of 2023, and sadly did not make the top 10, but it was very close. It had a very long run. We also have an ARC of August Blue by Deborah Levy. I, I think this will be my first Deborah Levy. I know it shouldn't, but I just want to, I just want to taste. I just want a taste of what her fiction is. And I believe this is about doppelgangers. Uh, what is the split self? Um, alter egos, reflections, shadows, lots of fun things about duality and doubleness. So excited to do this. It just seems like the perfect summer read. And yeah. My first Deborah Levy. I'm so excited. Ooh, yes. Ooh, what's your name? What's your name? Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot her name. Alice Wallace Johnson? Oh my god, did I just call you that? I am so sorry. Insert name here. But she mentioned this as one of her top books of 2023. It is The Age of Grief by Jane Smiley. It is a collection of short stories that I think look at the age of grief. Novella and stories of love, marriage, and friendship. Yep, that is all grief, if you ask me. Just love the cover of this. Let's take a second, y'all. Ten seconds of silence. Love that. Um, then a good friend of me sent Hell by... Henri Barbus. And what is this? It's a novel. Okay, I just needed to know that. It's a novel um, about a lonely traveler who moves into a rundown Paris boarding house. He discovers a hole in the wall in which he watches the secret lives of neighbors and strangers he will never meet. Ooh, we love a peeping Tom, don't we? Very excited to do this. Then I finally got this funny edition of Political Fictions by Joan Didion. It's a book on a book. Do you get it, y'all? I believe this is the one missing Joan Didion that um, I have in my collection, so excited to read through this. Is this a novel? I forget. Oh, no, they're essays on politics. Ooh, not my fave, but super cute that this exists. Yeah, I just love this cover so much. So fun. Okay, and I believe I already mentioned... No, I didn't. Maybe I didn't. I think I mentioned it on my Instagram stories, but y'all, we got Alphabetical Diaries, a physical ARC, which will no longer be an ARC when this comes out, but uh, y'all, please do pick this up. It was one of my top 10 books of last year, and it's such a joy. I love this so much. It alphabetizes Hetty's diaries from A to Z. Yeah, and it's through this curation that she creates beautiful and funny and heartfelt momentum of the lived experience, so... Uh, yes, please. Uh, if you are a major journaler, I highly wreck this. Oop, I want to spill my coffee. And y'all, we got all fours by Miranda July. Ah! This, I think, will get its own separate vlog because we've been waiting, y'all. Ten years, I believe. A decade since her last book, The First Bad Man. And this is, yeah, such a treat. Not a big fan of the cover. But um, thank you, Riverhead Press, for sending me this. Super excited to get into this. It's about woman midlife crisis in LA. And I think I'll just leave it at that because I really just want to jump into it. There's a beauty to Miranda July's worlds and characters where they feel otherworldly or they exist in this sort of alien realm adjacent to the lived world. And yeah, I just love how she writes and creates these characters and worlds. They oddly reach your heart in minor and strange ways, so very excited to do this. Okay, y'all, we're not even halfway through. Can you believe this? And I got <laughs> a good friend of mine sent me the uh, screenplay of Maestro by Bradley Cooper. Again, I, I've just been loving reading dialogue, so excited to do this. It was one of my top 10 favorite movies of last year, 2023. And yeah, and I love Leonard Bernstein so much, so. Okay, y'all, an author that I've been wanting to try for so long is Joy Williams. So we have Breaking and Entering 
This is a novel, I believe, about Willie and Liberty. They are drifters and they break into Florida vacation homes. Sounds weird? Up my alley. I'll take that. I'll take a little petty theft. I love a kleptomaniac. Okay, and Harper, perennial, sent me Others Were Emeralds by Lang Leave. This is about the daughter of Cambodian refugees. I grew up in a small Australian town of Whitlam, populated by Asian immigrants who once fled war-torn countries to rebuild their shattered lives. Love that. Asians in Australia, super underrepresented and super excited to look into the Asian experience abroad. Yeah, I feel like when we talk about Asian Americans, we only think of the Asians within the United States and we totally forget about Canadian Asians. But then there's also like the New Zealanders and the Australians and like, where are their voices? So super excited to look into this. We also got, ooh, The Hour of the Star by Clarice Lispector. I've already read this, but I believe this is a different translation by, uh, yes, Giovanni Pontiero. And I think a fun entry point into Lispector's work but also works a lot stronger if you've read one or two of her novels. This is a fun third uh, pick if you decide to uh, continue with your Lispector journey, as you should, because she is wonderful. We worship Lispector. Okay. <laughs> I might as well throw this in, but y'all, I have 14 Hills from SF State. My name is on there. It's still in its saran wrap, uh, but this is a collection of flash fiction and poetry prose that I'm a part of because uh, I submit it. This is my old alma mater, if you will. And yeah, I don't know if I'll take this out of the plastic ever <laughs> to keep it in its mint condition. Y'all, mint condition. Do I put this on eBay? Will you buy this? Or pick it up. Pick it up. 14 Hills. This is edition number 29 of 2023. Go support. Go out and buy it and uh, you'll read some of my writing fun stuff. Okay, um, I'm gonna go through this stack next, because, so we have some James Merrill, uh, sent to me by Knopf. Thank you so much, Knopf. Love ya! But yeah, who told me about this? Ooh, Matt Sharapa. Yes, Matt Sharapa, um, was telling me about this poet, and I've never heard of him until now. Thanks to him, we have, uh, his collected works, and very excited to look at his writing, so here we are. I really just want to jump into his work blind. Um, but heard many wonderful things about him from Matt. So thank you, Matt. Also from Knopf, we have Adnan, an epic by Linnea Axelson from Sweden. Adnan means land, the earth, and my mother, crucial forces within the lives of the indigenous families that animate this groundbreaking book. I'll leave it at that, but love this sort of um, fun uh, color here with uh, the mountains. Very, very nice. Thank you. Uh, we also have Machete, poems by Tomas Q. Maureen. And yeah, poetry. We love poetry. Maybe I might stick this in as like a quick morning read right now because it is already February 2nd and I'm still reading the shards, y'all. I could finish it, but I've just been so busy during LA and uh, haven't really had time to read. We also have another poetry collection, Spectral Evidence by Gregory... Part low. This is ooh, wicked cover. Look at that. A little haunting. Ooh, do you see that? We can see the lungs there. Wild. Dark, mysterious, impressionable. We also have Pacific Power of Light by Michael Dickman. Love this as well. Look at that cover, y'all. It looks like a photograph, but it's actually a painting. Mysterious bloom of smoke. Love that. Image-driven, sound-driven collection carries us to the working-class Portland, Oregon neighborhood of Lentz, where Dickman was raised by a single mother. Mm, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Excited to do this. And this is, ah uh, yes, an ARC from Avid Reader Press. This is the Ministry of Time. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This is out. When are you out? Perhaps he'll die this time. <laughs> What an opening line, y'all. Oh, cute. Okay, when are you out? May 7th, 2024. How fun. Excited to do this. Oh, uh, do y'all want to know what it's about? 
I read the first line for you. That should be enough, right? Um, a friend sent me The Lover by Marguerite Dura. Honestly, did not really enjoy- I'm so sorry, friend. I'm so sorry. I did not really enjoy this first time I read it. It just felt so, like, yellow fevery, and I just did not like it. It's about, like, French Indochina, and I just- I couldn't get into it because of, um, that, and I- I don't know. I don't know. This, I think, needs no introduction. It's- it has made its rounds before. De Roy was born in Saigon and um, then moved to Paris sometime later, but- but I think if you are looking for an adolescent teenage female voice, this is quite fun. It's very straight from the heart, I believe. But if we're talking about tiny little French teen girls, I very much prefer Francois Sagan, but we have De Roy here. Uh, we also got from Pantheon, The Hypocrite by Jo Hamya. This is August 2020, Sophia, a young playwright, awaits her father's verdict on her new show. Let me read the first line for y'all. There was summer, a beach, a country they were still getting used to in the early stages of their holiday. Sounds like a fun summer read, y'all. This is out August 2024. From Knopf, we have Blue Ruin by Harry Kunzuru. Yeah, I just love the cover on this so much. Look at that, y'all. Super sexy. The man is melting in the clouds. After graduating from art school in London, he was tipped for greatness, a promising career taking shape before him. Now undocumented in the US, he lives out of his car and makes a living as an essential worker, delivering groceries in a wealthy area of upstate New York. We are getting the immigrant experience the wide pay gap and living in the city. City boy. This is out by Knopf. When? When? May 14th. Look out for it. Yes. Yo, we got this new Jane Smiley by Knopf. This is Lucky by Jane Smiley. Such a gorgeous cover. I love the sort of film, double exposure film photography here. And before Jody Radler became a star, she was a girl growing up in, in St. Louis. One day in 1955, when she was just six years old, her uncle Drew took her to the racetrack where she got lucky. And the role of $2 bills she won has never since left her side. Hmm, sounds precious, y'all. Precious. What is it? Didn't I see The Age of Grief? We wanted to do more Jane Smiley. So excited to see more work from her. So this should be quite fun. Yeah. Okay, we're getting right down to it, y'all. But I want to make sure I want fun books. <laughs> Ooh, y'all, look at this copy of Watership Down. I don't remember where I got this, I think. Uh... No, yeah, Simon Schuster sent this to me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Simon and Schuster. But this is Watership Down. Isn't it like essentially Animal Farm, but bunnies, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a classic, right? And it's here. And I just love this little fun cover with all these bunnies. So, so cute. Excited to do this eventually. Uh, I'm not a good classics person, but here it is. Here it is. And I think I'm going to do this next. Okay. Still in its plastic, we have Banana Yoshimoto's Amrita. And I just love these covers. Who publishes these? Because Grove Press and Carolina Raquel Antique does the covers of some of Yoshimoto's books, and I love them so much. They're just these like really delicate, soft, pastel people. People in these like negative spaces, and it's so pretty. There's NP that I also want to pick up with the same artwork, and it's just so lovely. I, I love her art, yeah. But this is about an actress who suddenly dies under shocking circumstances, leaving behind an older sister, Sakumi, who suffers from memory loss in the wake of an accident. Ooh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, well, fun's not the word, but. And I don't know if I've mentioned, but I, I'm i turning 30 this year. And what I want to do is get into all the books that have made me, all the people that have made me, all the movies that have made me, all the books that have made me. One of those people that have made me is Fran Leibowitz. And we have the Fran Leibowitz Reader. I have, I think, two copies of the Fran Leibowitz Reader signed, I believe. I also have a copy of the Metropolitan Life Vintage, which is really nice. But I've been looking forever, everywhere, for this exact copy. I 
hate the one with like the public speaking uh, cover. I'll have it up here or something. When she did that documentary with Martin Scorsese, I just hate that cover. It's so, I mean, it's a good picture of her, but it's an ugly cover for a book. I just hate it. But this, y'all, this as a cover, oh, so good. Look at her sleeping in the cinema. It's so good. Y'all, it's so, so good. And I found it and uh, for a pretty good price. And I'm excited to do it, y'all. Excited to go back and read about New York City life back when and uh, get into her satire and humor. She has made me who I am in terms of navigating life and not giving a single fuck. So y'all, do the same. Do the same. Learn from Fran. Y'all, that's like, oh my god. That's, that's all the books. Insane, right? Insane. That's a year's worth. And I'm not gonna buy any books. Honestly, no, no more books. Cause this is enough. This is enough. And that's it. I told myself I'm not going to buy any books this year and sort of just read things that I already have on my shelf. And I'm really not sure what books to bring with me to Korea when I go back, but I have to be very selective, very, very selective. And I'm glad this video is only 25 minutes because oof, last time, oof, bit of a doozy, bit of a doozy. So y'all, thanks for being here. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know if you're excited about any of these. This was an interesting mix of ARCs and just backlist stuff and just old stuff. So it's, it's nice to see this cute little collection of books. Yeah, honestly, don't ask me how I picked all these old copies up. I just, if I saw it, it was like less than $5, I was like, yes, that's a steal and I'm stealing it. Y'all, as always, thanks for being here. Love y'all. Be well. Do good work. Keep in touch.